Hong Kong, to supporters of freedom from around the world who are here for the Wyandotte Free Group Economic Stiftung Conference. Thank you very much for joining us tonight to help celebrate the Wyandotte anniversary's 10th anniversary. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew Work, and 10 years ago, um, I got together with two crazy young guys, and we had an idea, and the idea arose out of a concern that we had for the city we loved. That city, of course, is Hong Kong. And we had a concern that this place that was seen by so many, as what Milton Friedman called the capital of capitalism, most economically free place in the world, we were concerned that Hong Kong might lose its way. And so we said, what can we do to help? And those two young men are here tonight, and they are my dearest friends in Hong Kong. They are Simon Lee, who's sitting right here, table seven, Simon. And the other one was Andrew Shun Pak Man, his best friend. Hi. And these three young men, and we said, well, we've got to do something about this. And we started by a lock, and we walked around, and we talked to people, and, and we tried to explain to them that we wanted to start a think tank. And at that time, there was only one other independent think tank in Hong Kong, so we exchanged. And so mostly when we told people what we wanted to do, we got to look like this. You guys want to think in a tank? I don't know how many times I heard that. Um, but we got it going. One of the things that made us very successful was bringing in, at that time, a little bit more gray hair. Now, you're wondering, why do I need more gray hair? Well, 10 years ago, I didn't have quite this much. Um, we started reaching out to people in the international economic freedom movement, and somebody said to us, if you're in Hong Kong and you're going to do this, you need to talk to Bill Stacy. So 10 years ago, Way of Stacy joined with these three crazy young men, not so young anymore, and he agreed to be the chairman of our new organization. And he is our chairman still. In between running his own financial firm that he's working with now, that's headquartered here in Singapore, um, and having a career, a very successful career in banking, he had time to help us move forward in developing a think tank promoting economic freedom in Hong Kong. And I'd like to ask him to come up and say a few words. Please help me welcome for 10 years now, the chairman of the Lion Institute. Thank you very much, everyone, and, um, uh, and, and welcome. I, too, have grey hair, but I shaved it off. Um, <laughs> um, Confucius is not often known as a liberal scholar, but, but in the interpretation of Pierre Rickmans, um, a, a European liberal who passed away recently, um, he does have some liberal sentiments that are worth mentioning, and also some beautiful language. And one of the things that he said is, it is beautiful to live amidst humanity. To choose a dwelling place destitute of humanity is hardly wise. And, and Hong Kong, of course, is a great tribute to that vision um, of living amidst humanity. Uh, the, the teeming numbers of people um, that uh, strain the MTR with only 15% more um, people um, uh, in Hong Kong that cooperate together, live together, work together, um, in such an effective way as a, as a tribute to the, con, uh, to, to the vision that, uh, that Confucius mentioned. Um, today we celebrate um, freedom in Hong Kong and the 10th anniversary, um, as Andrew mentioned, of the Lion Rock Institute, which was uh, founded and inspired by the three that Andrew mentioned who were then young and are now simply mature. Um, Hong Kong um, people uh, all of them who wanted to defend freedom in Hong Kong. And who would have thought, um, 10 years ago, when Lion Rock was set up, that uh, today we would be having such a debate about the very meaning and relevance um, of the Lion Rock spirit, um, the spirit that was so well captured in the Roman Tam song, um, performed under the Lion Rock or below the Lion Rock. And, and we are having that debate today. And so I think it's important um, to, uh, to reflect on what is the Lion Rock spirit and what is the Lion Rock Institute's vision of what the Lion Rock spirit that represents Hong Kong um, is. And 
as we see it, this spirit is not about power, not about who controls the government, but it's making, about making this a better place for us all to live through our own individual efforts, through our own cooperation, through the contracts we make with each other and the deals that we make. But essential to the line of spirit is that our destiny is in our own hands. The starting point of, of this spirit is not idealism, it is practical. Um, uh, but acknowledgement that you know, life is not always easy. Conditions, especially of the people in the post-war generation that found in Hong Kong, were, were cramped and often difficult. And in the words of the song, people, words of the song, people do have their worries. And the song also tells us um, that mutual aid brings people together and it overcomes challenges when people cooperate. That um, differences, and I think in the words of the song very clearly, differences meaning political ideology can be set aside to solve these problems. And I think solving problems is an essential part of the Lion Rock spirit of Hong Kong. And yet, the song says, people do have dreams to chase, and the path to those dreams is founded on people's own independence and personal responsibility and taking responsibility for your own destiny. And the song concludes by saying that hard work is what made Hong Kong. And I'd like to um, recognize the, the hard work of many of the people in Britain tonight together. Um, uh, Peter Wong, our executive director, has done again a magnificent job organizing the event. The team of people that we brought together um, to, to do that. Um, we're behind the scenes. Thank you very much all for your assistance. And much of that we couldn't have done without the support of, of sponsors for the event and people that have supported us for a very long time. I'd like to thank uh, Hong Kong Electric, CLP, um, Jim Walker's Asianomics Group, um, Centerline, um, The Link um, uh, in uh, Hong Kong, The Jockey Club, um, Cafe Pacific, um, and the Harbour Grand who are our hosts here tonight. We have also collaborated in this event um, with uh, the Fraser Institute, and thank you again, Greg, for coming, and we'll talk soon about um, economic freedom in the world and Hong Kong's place in that. Um, the uh, Economic Freedom Network that supports that work and the Frederick Nauman Foundation who have brought together many of the people who are here for an excellent conference that's happening in the background. Um, the Manco Economic Education Foundation, um, who supports our work and brings people from uh, Western Australia up to experience um, you know, freedom and markets working so effectively in Hong Kong. Um, thank you, um, everyone, for uh, your efforts in bringing today together. I'd just like to round out some brief introductory remarks by saying that um, Hong Kong has a great deal um, of economic freedom compared to uh, many places in the world. And there are some who believe in markets who will assert otherwise and who will back that back, back and defend the record of Hong Kong and establishing a great deal of economic freedom. Um, but there is an agenda to continue to change. Markets are dynamic. Um, and it's that process that was talked about earlier of creative disruption and change um, that we have to constantly um, adapt to. And Hong Kong does need to continue that process. Um, so we need to recognize that improved living standards, improved wages only come from higher productivity um, that allows people to deliver the services, products, and dreams that people want. And that productivity requires capital. And so Hong Kong must be the most attractive destination for capital and investment and efficiently using that capital. But uh, enterprise in free markets is the best way to ensure that that capital is used to satisfy real human needs, um, not the dreams for, of outcomes of bureaucrats or planners, which are different to the dreams that all of us as individuals separately have. And that to do all of that and for markets to work, we need institutions. And those institutions of civility, the rule of law, a sound monetary system, secure property rights, um, a, a free and vibrant press, a lean and efficient civil service, um, and centers of learning and education, we need to understand and preserve and help to grow, change, and adapt. We need to recognize that uh, human flourishing does create um, inequality. Indeed, that inequality drives um, uh, many of us to do more and achieve what we can. 
But we should not deny, and we should not deny the success of, of the wealthy in Hong Kong as some might. But per capita incomes in Hong Kong have stagnated, and if that is to change, we do need to pursue an agenda of continuing economic reform and ideas about how we can uh, deregulate the economy and leave to future generations um, a place that is as vibrant, as robust, and as able to adapt and change as we have. So Rock would like to um, rededicate our efforts over the next decade um, to uh, helping the Lion Rock spirit to live and go on, to building a free and prosperous Hong Kong. And we appreciate the efforts of so many of you here with us tonight to work towards that goal. So uh, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you very much, Bill, for speaking and for 10 years of service.